Hi, guys. How are you? Very good, thank you. Very good. good. Uh, we saw you last on Monday. We were yes. talking about all the gear for your run, so shoes mm -hmm. and socks mm -hmm. and looking fly, sunglasses, earphones, everything. Basically. Absolutely. You know, it's it's part. Why not make it fun? You know, it's, yeah. just, it's part of it. You know, exercise can be fun. I've been saying this all my life. Yeah. <laughs> Tell people this. But yeah, today's a little bit more serious. Um, it's talking about fuel for your run. So you know, we're we're kind of linking this at the moment to the Uradu Marathon in January. It doesn't have to be if you're not doing that. That's fine. This is good information for you to keep with you anyway for mm. any form of exercise, mostly running. Um, so, you know, if you think about, you know, from repairing muscles to maintaining energy, runners' bodies and any athlete's bodies do have specific nutritional needs. So that's what we're going to discuss today. So some of you out there who might like, might like peanut butter will probably be quite happy with yes. this. Today. Yes, make sure it's the peanut butter. Make sure it's organic. <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. I'm just going to jump in and tell you. I've got a thing about people with eating peanut butter. Yeah. I eat organic peanut butter yeah. that only has one ingredient. Yes. Peanuts. peanuts. Yeah. Not this uh, <laughs> commercialized. <laughs> and you just in there, see yeah. that? Peanuts. <laughs> no, not this um, kind of commercialized, yes. hydrogenated. No, 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 no. I oh, know, it's so full of nasties. It's really bad, you know, it's a different story. Yeah, we can have a whole there. show on peanuts. I know, but, you know, any organic, <laughs> I'm happy with you having that. But yeah, mm. these kind of things are quite good for you. So, you know, let's get to why, first of all. Nutrition is so important when you're exercising, especially covering long distances by mm -hmm. food. So for runners, food does, you know, it does more than just squelch hunger. You know, it also fuels your muscles and keeps you healthy. Runners need quality food. So that is very, very important. It does provide a spark almost, you know, for your energy and it will help you it'll keep you feeling your best and yeah. keep you running as well. Because if you don't feel good, you're not going to be able to do your training. So my first question would be then when we speak about, you know, food in terms of running, what time do you run at? And when I'm talking about running, I mean covering sort of 3K or more. You know, I want to talk. So, Laura, yeah. I actually do know the answer to this, but just tell everyone, you know, what time do you prefer to run? Work and being up early and things like that. I run usually around about 10 o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just works for me. It works for you in the morning. And everyone actually out there, you've probably all got this. We've all got a, a specific time that we like to exercise. Yeah. You know, my husband, he likes to exercise at night. I have always been a morning person. I can exercise 7 o'clock in the morning. That's me. I like to have it done. Now, the reason I'm asking this is because the time you exercise or the time you run makes a big difference to your meal plan because you're going to have to work everything around that. So when you're training for a major event, such as a marathon or even a half, it's quite, you know, it's often wise to prepare your body for the time that you will run on that day. So Laura, you're doing okay because you're a 10 o'clock sort of runner. Yeah. Well, the race is going to be at nine. So you're kind of around that time anyway. So that's great. So of course, it's not so good if you're a nighttime person, no. you have to kind of adapt it a little bit. And really this comes from training and eating at the same time each and every day on the lead up to a big event. This sets your body into routine and you won't get that stitch that I'm going to go and speak about shortly. So this is why a lot of runners, actually, me being one of them, we get quite superstitious. Yes, we were saying this in the sports news just recently. Oh, okay. We were talking to James and we were talking about the rituals that sportsmen yeah, have. Yeah. And it might be something like switching something on and off yes, several times. Yes. But I think it all comes from food. That's what I'd said. Yeah. It's because it's such a ritual and a routine because if you change that routine, it can change the way that you play, Absolutely. that you perform. Absolutely. I would say, you know, a psychologist could probably vouch for this. I think it comes down to OCD because a lot mm -hmm. of athletes, they're perfectionists. Yeah. And if you're a perfectionist, you can have OCD syndrome and you feel as if like if you didn't switch that light off, you're going to fail, yeah. which obviously is not actually true. But you just convince yourself of that. So it's mm. all a mental thing. And, and certainly mental preparation is, is key for any sort of athlete or for running. So, you know, like we've just said, being a little superstitious or, or quite sure of what you're having, you need to train your body. So I'm going to tell you for me, when I run, I always like to eat before about an hour to two hours before one piece of whole wheat toast with a banana and one teaspoon of organic almond butter. I prefer almond butter to peanut butter. Mm. That's my go-to. I'm not going to change that for anyone. You know, mm. that's what I have. But not everyone is like that. So you'll find something that actually works for you. We will talk about what's the right food in a minute. Um, but, you know, it's, I guess it's a case of trial and error. You've tried a few different things, Laura, haven't you, for your running? Yeah, in the mornings, whether it's a porridge or yep. the... Mm -hmm. For me, because I'm up so early, I always eat quite a bit in advance mm -hmm. ahead of, mm -hmm. of my run. You know, I'll eat at half four in the morning when I yeah. wake up and then I run at 10. So exactly. I kind of know that everything's settled quite nicely. Yeah. But definitely, same as you, has to be at least at least an hour, probably two hours yeah. beforehand. It should be. Something. It really should be. I mean, if you are a morning runner like we are, you know, it's, it's tough to hit, you know, hit the treadmill on an empty stomach. That's mm. not really advisable either. 
I always think that you should do any exercise with some food. Some people think, oh, but if I exercise and empty something, I'm going to burn more burn fat. It, to be honest, you don't. When you have mm. more food in you, you have more energy to therefore run further That's and the, harder. The, yeah. So it, it doesn't really work like that. Um, you know, you should definitely be having a snack if you're, if you're not able to have a full meal. But if you're not able to, you're looking at a 100 to 300 calorie snack. So like I've said, a banana, yeah. a piece of toast, something that has carbohydrate in it to give you energy, but not too much and maybe a little bit of protein. That's where my organic almond butter comes in. That's protein. Mm. So you could have maybe an egg or something like that. I definitely feel that the whole wheat toast ratio with the organic peanut butter really, really works. And bananas are just fantastic yeah. because they have complex carbohydrates in them. So they give you enough energy like to boost. Rockets. Oh, I just they're love just, them. Yeah, they're, love they're them. Perfect. I have one every single day. And they contain a lot of potassium. It's mm. also very good for you. Regulates your blood pressure and reduces the risk of your stroke. So they are win- winners. I love bananas. So the other thing is you could whisk up um, a breakfast smoothie. So like berries are really good. You know, as your legs take a lot of pounding, mm. you know, high impact activities like running will do, do create soreness in you. So, you know, berries have been proven to help reduce some of that. So pineapple and ginger are also really good to help take inflammation down after after running. So, you know, we've all heard about running and carb loading, right? So mm-hmm. what's your kind of idea on this, Laura? I don't know because I'm not at that level yet where I'm yeah. even thinking about it. But as far as I know, it means, say, the day before a long run, you're loading in the carbs. You're yeah. just kind of <laughs> just, just chowing down on, on the carbs. Yeah, this is what people think. They think, you know, carb loading. And yeah. I, I do sort of think the word loading is a bit heavy. Sounds like a truck backing up, really. Yes, doesn't it? it does, doesn't it? <laughs> Beep, beep. Well, I'll just give you a little bit of a bit of a scientific not- information here. So our body uses carbohydrate as its main source of energy. So carbohydrate is actually called glycogen inside our body. So it converts from carb to glycogen. So it will burn that first. You actually have enough storage of glycogen to run a half marathon. Mm. So you don't actually need to load up all of this stuff. However, you should definitely have some carbs in that diet because if you're watching what you eat and you're maybe not eating so many carbs you will struggle to complete a half marathon on a low carb or no carb crazy diet Mm. i hate these things Mm. they don't work you need to have carbs but they can come in the form like i said bananas complex carbohydrate definitely some toast so carb loading is more for the full marathon runners um it's normally done the night before an event and like i said to produce enough carbohydrate in your body so when you're running the next day because normally you're only going to have a small breakfast the next day it that like that glycogen is backed up as a reserve for your body to burn through so you'll get there but then you will still hit that wall if you're doing the full marathon and marathon runners out there will know exactly what that means it's normally around 30 kilometers that you hit the wall Mm. um sort of the last 10k to go the last six miles people start to struggle and that's when they wouldn't you know decide to have gummy bears or some energy gels or Gatorade to give them that extra carbs. But talking about the carb loading the night before, the reason I'm sort of saying to be careful about this is, you know, carbohydrates, they can slow us down if we have the wrong ones. So there are a difference between, I'm not going to go into it, but there's a difference between complex carbohydrate and simple carbohydrates. Mm. You're looking for complex. That's better. That's whole wheats. So whole wheat cereals, whole wheat pasta, things like bananas as well that are like complex and not they're really gonna white bread exactly roll or whatever. it's not like you know like the idea of carb loading is stuffing your face with a bowl of pasta not really mm-hmm. you'd be looking to have like chicken chicken with like quinoa chicken with whole wheat pasta yeah or salmon with some brown rice yeah like that so it's not just like a bowl of pasta no. or a bowl of cereal and the reason being that you know too many carbs will give you a stitch. Um, we're going to speak about stitches next week in terms of liquid because it normally comes a lot more in the form of drinking too much will mm, give you a stitch mm. rather than the food. Um, but, you know, too much carbs can sort of uh, give you a cramp, shall we say, yeah. in the side. So it's, it's really important that before you're doing a big run, and I mean, if you're going to be doing this 10K or the half, then yeah, sure, fill up on some carbs the night before, but they should really be these ones that I've mentioned, a little bit complex. You don't have to eat yourself silly. No. You really don't need to do it's that. It's not going to help at all. It's going to be a complete shock to your body if you've not been doing that throughout your training. Absolutely. And then the night before, you Absolutely. completely cram in the carbs. But it's going to go, what? It's like, it's like I said before, I think it's all trial and error. You can carry yourself over that distance without piling on too many carbs in there. So that's something just to, to bear in mind. You know, the other thing about food is, I'm going to just finish with this is, it's not also just about what to eat before you run, during your training or on the race day. It's also post. Mm. Now, I've told you this before, right? Post gym, most people they just go home and don't eat anything. Why? Because they're not hungry. 
because normally when you exercise, your body releases endorphins. It masks certain hormones yeah, in I your body. I certainly lose my appetite after I run, really. I, afterwards, I think, I'm yeah. not hungry at all. But I'm like, you tricking me, body. Yes, You it really is. want something after It is. All. It's absolutely normal to feel no sense of hunger after you exercise, which you would think, great, I'm going to get like a weight loss out of this. Mm. But no, it's the, the 30 minutes after you do, especially weight training, mm. is the most crucial time to feed yourself with protein to repair the muscles and the damage that you've done to your body. You need to refuel it again. So it's doing the right thing. So if you've been a nice big run, eventually, about half an hour later, you might be starving. Right? And this is a, something, a common mistake that I've had people say to me, I was running a marathon training for this and I gained weight. Why? I thought I'd be losing weight. And like, well, first of all, you shouldn't be running a marathon to lose weight. That's mm. that's those two things are not the same. Mm. So that's kind of wrong in a start. Um, you know, when you're running, you have a, a psychological thing. You might overcompensate. Like, well, I ran 10k today, so I can have chocolate and I yeah. can have a cake. Yeah. So what happens is you start to gain weight because you're <laughs> actually mistreating the whole point of it. You know, you're you're running and then you're feeding yourself with something that's. I treat. I mean, we're not we're not dogs. We need to reward ourselves with food, right? Mm. It's it's kind of strange to do that. And um, certainly, you're allowed to treat now and again, but it doesn't have to be every time you run. Yeah. So you need to think about you know seeing this as the optimum time for your recovery, and you know feed yourself with something nourishing and repairing. Mm. That's how you have to think of it. I've become a bit of a weirdo carrying around bits of <laughs> pro- like portions of protein with me. I'm like, mm, got a Greek yogurt. I'm like turning it around, looking at the protein amount, and also you know protein eggs. bars, egg. Yeah. You just become a little bit strange with I it. Mean, like, it. Don't is. mind me when I pick at this piece of chicken that I put in my handbag for later. Like, <laughs> who, who does that? Like, I know. I don't. But thankfully, I don't. I you know I don't sit in. A, I don't work in an, an office, so I don't have colleagues watching me. But you know, I am the kind of person that shells and a hard boiled egg and eats it. You know, as a snack. And I'm sure that would just would not go down well on a on a public bus or something, would it? You know. But yeah, it's 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 protein. It's yeah. you've got to fuel your body. And you know what? Who cares what anyone else thinks? You're you're eating the right. I'm going to eat my portion of walnuts. You're looking at Why me with my not? Tupperware. Exactly. You know, it's, you're looking after yourself. It's the main thing. But yeah, you know, you really need to. First of all, the most important thing after any run is hydration. This is key to our livelihood. You know, we cannot even think about not drinking. We have to drink water straight away and really replenish that. And I, you know, really do think you need to drink. It depends how long you've been running for. Um, but normally we, they say, you know, at least half a litre mm. sort of within the first half an hour. And then just keep, you know, replenishing the water till you feel satisfied. And then we need to repair our muscles and our fibres in those muscles. So this is when the carbs come in. Um, but again, it's light carbs. So a piece of whole wheat toast again, or a chicken wrap, or even like a tuna wrap. You know, that's a little bit of carbs with your with your protein in there. And lean meat, such as beef, it's high in iron, which is especially important for runners and um, because iron deficiency in our body can lead mm. to fatigue. Mm. So you get a lot of iron from spinach, green leafy vegetables, yeah. you know, um, all these kind of things, uh, broccoli. And also omega-3 is found in salmon and oily fish. And this is really good to help inflammation. So I also take these as supplements as well. I mean, I do believe that you should be able to get these from your food, but there's no harm in taking supplements. If you are training, your body needs a little bit more than the average person who's not. So you do need to take care of it. And, you know, running and other weight-bearing exercise, it can really help improve your bone density. Um, So you do need to keep up your calcium intake as well. So let's just take all this information in today that, you know, you've got to fuel yourself before you run and after and take care of your body that you're pushing it to, you know, do all this exercise. Mm. You've got to reward it. Yes. You know, with the right food and drinks. Not with cake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bananas are the way to go. <laughs> well, I'm going to go get my uh, my small protein portion out my handbag. And, uh, Fabulous. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> we'll catch up with you next week on Monday. Yes. We'll see you then. Have a good weekend. You too.